Hey, what is up guys? Welcome back. So welcome to my guide on the next upcoming event, the Heart of Surging Flame, also known as the Obsidian Festival as well. It's the same event. It's actually a series of events that we're going to be getting very, very soon on the Arcanized Global server. So before we begin, actually you need to give two disclaimers. Um, one is that there will be spoilers in this video, kind of like not story spoilers, but like gameplay spoilers in this video because it is talking about future content and I'm basing this off these the Chinese server which came before so um, but you know if you if we take a look at the granny event they basically repeated the same thing they did on this CN server so it should be the exact same on the global side as well maybe with some sp things sped up right and the second is that I'm, I actually did not play on the CN server but I do look up a lot of stuff. I am able to read Chinese, so I do look up a lot of stuff. And this video is actually the results of my research. I just wanted to share that with, with you right now. So this event will be coming after the, it should be coming after the Hoshiguma banner ends because it will introduce Swartz, which will be the next limited banner. Um, she's a six star sniper very very waifu definitely worth uh worth getting and on the first week of the event there's going to be a seven day login reward it's pretty straightforward um i just translated this roughly to to english but the important thing do you hear water i hear water the important thing is that it gives it gives some materials some lmd and it gives five recruit or not recruit um this is recruit but it's headhunting permits and it also gives um chips one chip which is really good because i hate farming the chip stages kind of feels like a waste of sanity so i do like getting the chips the ones that you need to like uh, make the chips where like five star six star e2s man my voice sounds super weird i think i, I just had like a bowl of ice cream so so like i'm on this like ice cream high but at the same time, my voice is just like really, really weird because ice cream was like really cold. But yeah, recruit permit, like five of them is actually a lot. Five of them is like, not recruit, um, is it recruit permit or is it head hunting? <coughs> I think it's recruit. I'm not sure. But I do like recruit permits. But chips are nice. Chips are... Chips are really good. I, I, I hate farming the chip stages, so having some chips are pretty good. And they might actually introduce these at the same time, the, the two events at the same time. Or this they could introduce this one one week before. I'm not too sure. Um, they could speed things up on the global server where they like have both of them happen at the same time. So it's, it's definitely possible. It's definitely very, very possible. And what, or what they could do is actually have this next week and then the week after they'll have the Obsidian Festival. So that's also a possibility. But either way, it's gonna be happening very, very soon. So in order to show you some of the visuals of this event, I had to borrow a video from um, Billy Billy. This is like the Chinese YouTube. And I'll include a link to this video in the description below. Um, one, so you can look at it. Two, to give credit to the creator of this, this video as well. And, you know, because everything's in Chinese, so, you know, probably most people aren't going to be watching it. But he does actually, um, this is like his his look at the event. And he actually clicks through a lot of it. So I'm able to show you a lot of the visuals of this event using this video. Okay, so there's two types of stages that you can farm on the first week of launch. I mentioned that it was a event that's going to be a, a series of events that's going to like unlock one after the other. So during the first week what we're going to get is we're going to get two types of stages the main types of stages and these are called like carnival stages which are just some bonus stages and the the main stages still have first time clear rewards is pretty straightforward but afterwards you're able to farm these currencies either these tickets or obsidian and what the tickets are used for is you need the tickets in order to do the carnival stages over here and the carnival stages will give you these, I'm gonna just call them gotcha tokens. Okay, they're, they're gotcha tokens. So from what I heard, the two types of stages or, or the normal type of stages in terms of sanity efficiency, they're all pretty much the same. 
So, which means that it doesn't really matter which one you farm. You just kind of farm the one that gives you the materials that you need. So if you only need the tickets and you just farm the ticket stages, if you need obsidian, then you farm the obsidian stages. And if you farm the one that has both, it will cost more sanity than the ones that only have one. So the sanity efficiency should be the same. Don't quote me on that. It's just what I heard. Okay. And you might be wondering, okay, so what are, what are the obsidians for? So the obsidians, they're used to unlock all of these rewards that you see down here. We'll actually go in and we'll take a look at the visuals of this. Um, I'm going to go over here. So these are not, it's not a shop thing where you have to like buy rewards. What it is, is it unlocks after you obtain a certain amount of obsidian. So you don't have to spend your obsidian you just have to get to 4000 you just have to make sure you have 4000 obsidian uh, the reason why you want to have 4000 obsidian is to get all the rewards that you see over here and 4000 un unlocks everything and it's actually quite a lot of stuff like see like tier 4 rewards a lot of xp tokens skill books also a whole bunch of furniture a lot of tier 3 mats as well a lot of tier yeah th there's a lot like tier five mats, it's 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 pretty 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 nice. It's pretty nice, and this is only one part of the event. Like getting all this stuff is just one part of the event. And you might be wondering, what are these things? Like they, they look kind of weird. What are they? These are the furnitures that you get, but you can only choose one. Okay, you can only choose one. You have to make that decision before. I think before you start the obsidian thing collection. I think you have to make the decision before. Don't quote me on that. I'm not 100% sure. But what these three things are, they're just furniture. And you have to select a faction that you want to support, basically. And I think th these are like bands or artists or whatever. Basically, like the theme of Obsidian Festival is like, it's like a music festival. So like, this is like a, I don't know, like a pop group. And then this is like EDM, and then this is like hip hop. So you, you either choose Alive um, until Sunset, DDD, or Emperor. And, and the three furnitures that you get on the th on for for choosing those three, I actually have a video over here. So if you choose um, Alive until Sunset, then you get to have this thing, this little this. Uh, it's, it's actually not little. It's a pretty big stereo thing that you can have over here. And then you can also go over here. Please load. Come on. All right, that's it. I'm ha I'm I'm gonna have to refresh it if it doesn't load. Come on. Come on. Come on. This is the production quality you have on my channel. Okay, I, I like just this is this is I just do everything in one go in one take and uh, and never edit that's 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 what I do okay okay maybe, maybe I'll just include a link to this in the description below because for some weird reason it just refuses okay it refuses to show me even though it loads from loads below what if I turn it to 360p if I turn it to 360p then it might actually show it. Okay, if I turn it to 360p, it shows it. So this is the, the one, if you choose DDG, you get this DJ table. It does look pretty nice as well. And then if you choose Emperor, you get this brick wall that has graffiti on it and this boom box and the gold chain. You can't forget the gold chain, you know. You wanna, if you want to be real gangsta, you can't forget the gold chain. Anyways, that's that's the three factions that you choose, and it just gives you different um, furniture based on the, the faction. So that's like the first uh, first part of the event. Uh, I forgot to talk about this. So this is like the this is the gotcha for materials. So what it is is you will be able to draw from these five pools. Um, six pools. There's five main ones, and then there's like a one bonus pool afterwards. 
And you're, you have to use these gotcha tokens to pull from these gotcha machines. And to show you a visual of that, to show you a visual of that, we'll take a look at this over here. So you'll need 20 of these in order to pull once, and then you can do a 10 pull for 200. And it'll give you, this is where you get your, because you get your um, Salen, I think Salen is, is her name. You get your Salen from clearing this stage. You'll get, you'll first get her here. And then after you do some of the rolls, you'll be able to get her um, tokens in order to get her to max potential. And you get a total of five tokens here to get her to max potential. And you basically what you do is you just pull from this pool and then you don't have to pull everything from this pool. I think once you, I heard that once you get the furniture, you can move on to the next pool, but you want to grab like as many of the valuable resources as possible before moving on to the next pool. And I think it's not really a big issue because the way that they designed this is that you're able to, like, even if you're a free to play player, you should be able to clear out all five pools and get all the rewards here without much of an issue if you're playing every day, right? And on the sixth, um, the sixth pool is gonna be like an infinite pool of stuff. The rewards aren't as good, but you can, you know, after you clear out the five pools, you can start pulling on this one. And what this one will give you is a whole bunch of these tier three mats. And you'll see that two of them has actually higher drop rate, 55% magnesium and sugar. So what you wanna do is if you're currently in need of these two materials, just start stop farming them because you're gonna get a lot of them in, in this event um, after, after this event. And what this also means is that if you're, um, you know, if, if you're planning on like refilling or, or anything, like if it's worth, if you're thinking if it's worth refilling for this event, this event actually has one of the highest efficiencies and overall like stuff you can get. So like you want to definitely be like, if you can, you definitely want to be like refilling like 10 times a day during the, this event and saving, probably saving all your sanity for like a week before. So you can maximize the amount of sanity you use. Um, so definitely save your sanity potions until the event launches and then you can pop them all and just like farm like crazy on the, on the first day. So that's, that's the gotcha. This is probably the biggest thing about this event because you get a lot of resources from here and like, like, look at this, you get five of these D32 steals from this. And then you get another one here. Yeah, you get you can get sixty thirty two steals from this event. That's that's pretty crazy. That's actually that's a lot. Like that, getting these like these are so hard to make. It's it's, it's actually it's actually really really good. So that basically is like the first part of the event. Um, kind of just farming these stages, and then farming these token stages, and then using these these gotcha tokens to do the gotcha, the, the item gotcha, and then getting all these materials. Now, there's one little tip that I, I do actually want to give you, is that when the event starts, you actually won't be able to um, access F4, the F4 stage. And the F4 stage, I heard, gives the highest efficiency in terms of these tokens. So what you want to do is, on the first week, you can farm these stages, and then hoard a whole bunch of these tickets, and on the second week, once the F4 stage launches, you can farm the F4 stage for the maximum amount of tokens. And then you'll be able to do more of these pulls and get more resources. So that's just a, that's just a little tip. But I think in terms of efficiency, it's not too different. Um, I, I heard that the second one is better than the first one, the third one is be better than the second one, and the fourth one is better than the third one. So as you kind of go down, um, efficiency increases. So definitely want to farm the, the higher stages, but I think it's, it's not like a huge, huge difference. So shouldn't, you don't have to worry about it too much. If you need to, if you have the time or need to farm these stages, um, during the first week and you need some of these materials, potentially you could just do that early. That's um, not going to be too big of an issue, but it's just a little tip I wanted to give you. So the second part of the event is, as you can see that like, if we go back to here, if we go back to here, there's a part of the event that is locked. 
So um, at the time of the time that he was recording this, this the second part of the event has not launched yet. And the second part of the event is going to introduce these EX stages. And these EX stages are, if you d did the granny event, the last event, it's going to be very, very similar to that. It's going to have, all of these stages are going to have challenge modes. So you'll be able to do these and then do the challenge mode again. And it'll give you a total of um, 12 of these. Originite Primes, which is quite a, quite a bit. It also gives like tickets and these tokens and this um, furniture. So furniture is definitely nice as well. And I wanted to talk a little bit about the actual st stages because for the normal stages that you were, were seeing over here, like the, the normal ones, even the carnival ones are very, very easy. Um, I actually found this series of videos. I can also include this in the description below. I'll make a list of all these videos and stuff. In the description below but all these normal stages are doable with only like three star four star units um, most of them are doable with just three star units it's very very easy for the regular stages however the the ex and especially the challenge mode stages are going to be much much harder i actually found a run through of all the challenge mode stages and for the third for the first three stages it's pretty easy it's pretty easy pretty straightforward so it's just your regular tank and spank, okay? Like this one only has like two two lanes, um, three entrances. It's just your regular tank and spank. The second one is um, is also the same as well. I do need a water. Like this video is so long. The third one is also the same. It's also a tank and spank. The fourth one is a little bit special because there's a limited amount of range tiles and you have to, there's a number of units you, you have to block and there's two exits that they can exit out of. So actually one of the units that, that are, that's like super good on the stage is actually Silen or Salen herself. Kaylin. Is, is it Kaylin? If it's C-E, it's Say, Say or... I don't know. I don't know if it's Kaylin or Silen. I think Silen sounds better. It, it could be both. I don't know. I think it's Kaylin. I, I do think it's Kaylin. Or I'm just going to call her Kaylin. Um, Kaylin is actually really, really good on this stage because the thing about Kaylin is her range is increased. So a regular healer's range looks like this, right? But she's a healer that can heal like really far. <laughs> So her range is expanded for a healer, and she's able to heal 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 units on the side, which means that on the on this stage she's able to cover all the healing of all these units by herself like this. If you put her here, she also has a passive that if there's water on the stage, she gets twenty four. Um, I think it's twenty four. Was it? Yes, twenty four max potential. She gets. 30 percent extra attack so 30 percent extra healing you know attacks that transfer translate to healing for healers um she gets 30 percent extra healing when there's water on the stage so she can actually cover the healing on this stage by herself if you just put her in the center now you might be asking like you know should i should i be raising her just for the event she's not just good for this event she actually has some niche uses in the future and she can actually be used as a regular healer like she's as strong as any other five star healer it's just that she also has that increased range um in terms of like just normal healing if you don't count the like special abilities and stuff like she heals as much as any any five star healer um, in terms of attack stats not too different it's just the when on the expanded slots she only heals for 75 percent. so ones the ones on the side she only heals for not 75 70 percent of her healing so if you just use her as a normal healer like there's no reason she's not able to do what a normal healer can do so i think she's a very flexible unit very um versatile so definitely definitely worth raising and she has some niche uses in the future like i heard that there's like a, a stage in the uh, one of the upcoming events the the one after this um contingency contract which is like the hardest possible content in arc knights um, there's one stage where like there's a limited amount of ranged house and one of the clear methods is you can actually use her to like heal all the melee units on that stage because she has such like insane range 
So she definitely has some niche uses um, and is definitely worth raising as well. And it's not just worth raising for this event, she's worth raising in general. And I definitely will will raise her in the future um, on my main account. Plus she's like very waifu, just look at, look at this. Isn't this amazing? She's like very, very waifu. So definitely, um, I, I highly, highly recommend you save some resources to raise her for for this event and she's actually usable in the the other stages as well the other thing is um a unit that's very very good to borrow for this event is if you have any friends with as like afa um she's like the best here she she can deal deal damage on this stage she can deal damage on this one and the the next one as well so the three hardest stages for the event she she's like gonna be top dps for for all of it all right so if you have a friend with Aya, um basically just an Aya with ignite so she doesn't even need to be e2 you can you can use her she doesn't even need her volcano skill you can actually use her at e1 and if you have her like second skill which is um i think it's not ignite it's called ignition it basically turns her into an aoe mage with increased range so she's pretty pretty insane on all these maps as well so the the fifth stage is relatively simple um it's you'll want to borrow and use an ea the other thing is you'll want to have a shaw that has um rank seven skill and at e1 you want to use a shaw with skill two and it's mainly to do like a bit of cheesy stuff like over here you can actually push a lot of units into this hole with shaw so having a shaw here is very very pretty pretty important and you probably should have a shaw anyways if you like are planning to do annihilation three like shaw rank seven is um is needed for that as well so yeah having an e1 shaw with rank seven skill is um it's a really really good idea the last stage is another stage where um Kaylin also shines She's able to cover this tile. A normal healer can't cover this tile. So basically, um, the strategy is just using Perfumer to heal these four. And then Kaylin's also able to cover, or, or these three. But um, Kaylin's also able to cover these three as well because of her increased range. A normal healer will only be able to heal these two, but she's able to heal these two as well because she has increased range on the side. So that's what, that's what makes her really, really amazing. In terms of other units, anything that you're using for like Annihilation 3 can be used here. So like Shiryuki, Jitano, um, you can probably use Meteorite as well. And then Jitano also does a lot on this stage. If you take a look at the enemies that are on the last two stages, so this one is for EX5 and this one for EX6. Um, on EX5, the normal like units, like these are just the normal like walking um, soldier units. They have 230 armor, so like your snipers are going to be doing a lot of damage, and the the um, the shield ones are have like 500 armor. So your your like snipers are going to be doing next to nothing to to these guys, and most of your melee units are going to be doing doing too much, and the heavy units have like 1k armor. So it's going to be very very hard to DPS these units down using like physical damage. I highly recommend you use arse damage against them. It's the same for the other stage as well. Um, having that high AoE arse damage, like this one is 800, this one has 1k armor. That's why using like Jitano is um, is really, really good. Jitano will be able to AoE a lot of these down. A lot of these units have relatively high armor and um, using Jitano is a really, really good idea. The other thing is um, borrowing an Aya because Aya also does high, she doesn't only just do high single target, she also does very high um, AoE damage as well. And because she's a single target mage, she's able to cover this slot from this tile over here. A normal AoE caster won't be able to cover this tile. And so because she's actually a single target caster, and with her second skill, she does AoE damage, so she's able to cover this tile. So number one, like recommend recommended unit for you to borrow, like as a support from one of your friends is definitely Aya Fala. If you have any friends that have Aya, um, you know, tell them to set it as support. If you like, if you know anyone that's on your friends list that you can talk to, tell them to set it as support. Um, if you're missing friends that have Aya, definitely you can go on the Arknights Discord to 
hunt for friends there. It's definitely a very, very good idea. But I don't think it's like 100% necessary. She's just, she's just the best. Like, I could probably use um, a haze here, like an E2 haze. My E2 haze over here. Pro potentially Amiya here. And it could probably do the same thing. But they will need to be higher level. It's mainly the, the range thing, or else I would use an AoE mage here. But that's that's basically it in terms of like what you want to raise for um, for doing these challenge mode stages. She's definitely worth raising. I think if you want to, you can start saving up some resources for her. She doesn't need to be E2. She can do everything you kind of need her to do at E1. Um, but I, I would say I would recommend having near max level if you plan to use like these two strategies the one where you put her in the center and then the one where you use her to heal with her extended range i do think it's a it's a pretty good idea or else you really don't have anything that can heal over here unless you like i mean if you have like saria you could just put her down here so you don't have to use her but she's definitely worth raising because because she has some like um some niche uses in the future so I, I actually will be will be raising her on my uh my main, my ult can't use her because my ult can only use four stars. It's gonna be so rough on my ult. I'm, I'm kind of still thinking like, how can I clear this on my ult without, without uh, without using her. But I think I'll figure something out. I'll definitely figure something out. But anyways, I think that is pretty much it. I think there's only one last thing, which is, um, these are mission rewards. So after you like clear a stage or something, you you can unlock these. It's not a lot, but it just gives you some extra resources. And the second part of the event is like, this thing is exactly like this thing, like the obsidian. It's just the second part. So you just farm the stages, collect these, and then they unlock these um, rewards. And they're not like super good, but they're like pretty decent. At least I get a chip and I can potential one of my supports, which is kind of not good. Why, why does it have to be support? Why can't it be like guard or defender or something, right? But it is what it is. That, that is uh, that is pretty much what we're, we're going to be getting on this event. So to recap, you want to save as much sanity as possible. And if you're planning on like refilling, um, this is the event to do it. Like this is the event where you blow like all of your sanity, all your original primes on refills. Like this is the this is the one to do it on. Like if you didn't do it for the granny event, it's okay. Like but this is this is the one to do it on. So like, you know, if you're whale definitely like ten times a day. It's uh highly, highly recommended. If you're not, start saving your sanity pots and whatever spare originite you have, um you can blow it here, but like it kinda depends on your your units. Because some people are trying to save for like future units to pull, so it's it's up to your own own decision. Um, but you know, probably on my all, I'm gonna use up all my originite, and then same on my <laughs> same on my main. It's gonna be it's gonna be uh it's gonna be pretty crazy. The next thing is for in order to clear the the challenge mode stages you want to have pretty much everything you use for Annihilation 3 like will be used here like the Shaw, the uh, Perfumer, you know your tanks, um, your snipers, your healers it's like your AoE caster, your AoE sniper it's gonna be like everything you're using for Annihilation 3 will pretty much be used here your Vanguard, Shaw again you know so I don't think in, in terms of that um, healing tank like in terms of that there's not too much to worry about. It's just um, the kind of the other things you may need is like her, if you want to use her this way. But then if you have two healing tanks, you could probably put another healing tank um, on this slot instead. And then this healing tank will be able to heal the Shaw as well. So that's also another option, right? That's also another option of what you can do. But yeah, there's definitely more than one ways to clear these extreme um or ex challenge mode stages but these are just some of the i guess guaranteed ways like proven ways i think the word is proven these are just some proven ways that you can do it as you can like literally the there's video proof of people doing it but there's definitely more than one way of doing this 
and you don't have to exactly use these units. I think if I had to E2 Chitano, I could probably just use her here instead of Aya. But borrowing an, an Aya will be pretty huge as well. And then having having Salen in, in her own event. I do actually like the design. I do like how they design these stages in order to show her, like, show the actual event unit strength in her own event. That's... That's actually pretty pretty cool. I hope they do more of this in the future, where they they introduce a, a new unit. You know, they they create these stages that can really showcase the strength of that unit, um, but also at the same time, still give players like al alternative options to to clear these stages. I think that's also a really nice thing to do. But anyways, that is yes, that is pretty much it. Um, Yes, I think that's I think that's pretty much it. Um, I think for once the the stages actually do come out, I'll make some guide videos on like how to actually do it. I'll do it on my free to play four star only account as well, and then we'll see we'll see what happens there. So in order to catch that video, be sure you're subscribed to the channel, and um, if you have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I will try my best to answer them, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.